Niamh and Austin make sweet music together. Nobody knows it. But after four years, they still can't afford their dream wedding. Most of the time I say, we think we're team, you know? Together everybody achieves more. Yeah. Team. They're getting 10,000 euro to make that dream come true, but there's a catch. You can't see each other for the duration of the filming at all. Austin will organise the wedding, and the couple must agree in the presence of a lawyer that Niamh will have no contact with him until she says I do in three weeks' time. Like, I'm amazed how he's going to get this done in three weeks. Why are you giving me more stress for, like... You don't answer your phone. Yeah, so how are you getting stressed? You're getting stressed having to ignore calls. What on earth will the bride end up wearing? The dress is at the epicentre. Niamh's a fussy little girl, all right. It's a nightmare picking one. I would die if, if I thought it wasn't the perfect dress. <laughs> Can Austin find her dream venue? I don't think the dream venue for me exists. It's, it's really taking my breath away. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And cope with some difficult bridesmaids. I'm not willing to wear a dress. It doesn't fit me and it clashes with my hair. It's a very difficult group to, to please. I'd be happy for them to be in bin bags and spend all the money on the stag deal. This is embarrassing me the title, please. Anything goes. Just don't tell the bride. If he gets it wrong, he's going to have to make up for it for the next 50 years. They met through friends five years ago, and from the beginning, personal assistant Neov was smitten by IT guy Austin. He's very gentle and kind. He's very generous and he's very thoughtful. And he's obviously gorgeous. He's just perfect. <laughs> and Austin knew straight away that this was the girl for him. Neve is gorgeous. She heals my wounds as well, like, you know. She's just absolutely gorgeous and amazing. I love her and Austin as a couple. They're brilliant together. They're such a solid couple that I'm sure he'll get most things right, like, I hope. <laughs> the couple have been trying to plan a wedding for years, but they weren't expecting this to happen, and it looks as though Austin has his work cut out. Nia's very strong-minded. She kind of has her own ideas. So to give full power to Austin to organise a lot of it without her input, should be hard for Neve to do. Down to the last detail, everything's planned. Even down to how she eats her food, it's all planned. No wonder Neve has her own ideas about how a wedding should be. She's been planning her big day since the age of three. People say sometimes I'm nearly OCD, like in terms of how I like things to be organised and get things done. Uh-oh, prepare to meet Bridezilla. If I was organising my wedding, I basically wouldn't really let Austin do anything. Hey, babe, so you should come see. I'm very bad at getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> I'm really bad, like, Neve would be like, get out of bed! Yeah, I mean, get out of bed! I'd say you could sleep for about 15 days and then maybe close to the last week you'd go up and start doing something. <laughs> I do see it as kind of a test for Austin. It's really his way of showing me, like, the, that he, he totally gets me. Neve's a fussy little girl, all right, so I think um, Austin will be, will be getting a bit of verbal afterwards. If, if I get something wrong, I think Neve would be very upset, like, or she, she'd be a little emotional. The thing I'd be the most nervous of would, would be that he'd actually pick a dress that I really, really hate. I'd be devastated on the one hand of having to actually wear an ugly dress, but I'd also be really upset that he got it wrong. Austin, his nickname is Ace Ventura Pet Detective, just the shorts he'd just be getting in himself. I don't know where he buys them. If there's anything he's going to mess up, it's colour schemes and things like that. I love pink. If it comes in pink, I have it in pink. I have a pink PlayStation, yeah, pink DS, pink everything. There's so many different shades of pink and I wouldn't love every shade of pink as much to have a preference over the shade of pink. She knows I love her now now, but our style sometimes can be a lot to be desired. It has to be a proper, long, big wedding, wedding, wedding dress. Not getting it right. Not, not, being, not making it brilliant, like. It's the, the, the thing I'm wor most worried about, like. Today they are parting for the first time. Neve is moving out of the house she owns with Austin in Clongriffin, North Dublin. When Neve moves out, I will be heartbroken. Um, I will be, uh, I'll be a lost soul. I talk to him at least four or five times every single day, you know, and have done forever. It's, it's, it's going to be a long three weeks. Like, it seems... Like an eternity, like really. Steady, it's only three weeks. 
but being apart won't stop Nia from making sweet music with her man. I have envelopes with it, the, the password and a, a code for him to log in every day so that he can go in each day and get a new video. They're, they're like music videos that exist, but he'll just he'll have a log in that he can go in and, and have the song from me. And one a day and no cheating. I know you'll know I'm thinking about him, but just that little extra kick of sort of just to remember that I'm, I'm there with him. Let's hope he remembers her. After all, he's planning to marry her. So with enough tears to cause a small flood, Niamh prepares for her long, painful journey to her mum's house in Beaumont, three miles away. Oh yeah! <laughs> Niamh's actually the baby. She's my youngest, my little beauty. I don't know how anyone could organise everything in three weeks. I don't know if he'd know what colours to put with what. How can you organise all of that in three weeks? I or, really don't know. You don't know. And your dress. Do you get a fitting for that before the day? When we were little girls, me and my sister had Barbies. My mum actually knit us little wedding dresses for our Barbie dolls and she made little veils out of neck curtains and we used to have little mock weddings like with our Barbies getting married. Pretend Barbie weddings. Oh dear. I've always believed that my wedding would be just like, it would just be the, the greatest day of my life and the most important day. Back in Clongriffin, Austin tries to adjust to life without Neve by listening to her song for today. Don't tell the bride, day one. Ingrid Mikes and everybody, um, it's, a, it's a singer me and he went to see one time in the UK and we love her very much. You got her photos taken with her now, so uh, she's a real favourite. Keep me from feeling too sad. <laughs> yeah, just keep me from feeling sad because I miss her so much and stuff. Well, that's cheered him up. But Austin doesn't have time to be broken hearted. He has a wedding to arrange. First, he summons his team. His best man is his brother, Scott, backed up by accountants Rob and Dave. A wedding planned by IT guys and accountants. That sounds like fun. Knocking it out. How's it going? Hey, can you put? All right, man. Uh, job's on. Um, I have a list here. What I'm going to do. Rob you, you're the accountant, so as you know, you know, you'll be looking after the budget and finance and stuff like that. Dave, I'm going to get you to look after cake. We're thinking pink cake. Scott, cars, invitations, invitations for the wedding. So we'll decide in venue soon enough. He's filled in a piece of paper, I'm happy with that. Like, he's done a list, that's a start, as far as I'm concerned. Before talking to him today, I would have thought, not a chance. There wouldn't be a hope in hell that he would be able to pull it off. But talking to him today, he seems to know what he's at. He's got a plan in place. Just think pink. Think pink, think pink. I know she loves pink, but I don't know if she loves a pink wedding dress. It's a gamble, but it's going to be touch and go. She could love it or she could hate it. Pink dress, it's, it's taking a big risk. I suppose that's, that's Austin. He's, he's willing to take a gamble on it. I don't want any part of that pink dress. So against the advice of his team, Austin is taking a gamble and opts for a big, fat pink wedding. But let's hope he doesn't mess with the dress because Neve seems impossible to please. We've been engaged like four and a half years. Um, I've been constantly dress shopping um, and where I suppose I should have just been window shopping I have actually bought three dresses. Three dresses? How many weddings is she planning to have? This is the first one that I bought. I liked the kind of netting on it and I thought it was kind of unusual with the to have sleeves and it has a train as well. I bought that one online. Bought that about four years ago I'd say and I bought this veil to match with it and you can wear it lots of different ways and you can have it coming down that way where you can wear it kind of further back. Um, this is the second one that I bought. Again, I bought this online and it was much more of a kind of traditional big white wedding dress. Big and white and traditional. Traditional and white. How hard can that be? If the dress is really something horrible and it's just horrific, it's going to be a big black mark and he's going to have to make up for it for the next 50 years. The punishment for failure is a life sentence. Good luck, Austin. 
Does she like sparkles or does she not like sparkles? I think the corsets are nice. Oh, looks them. She's your missus. You're supposed to know all this stuff. You're supposed to help me. It's the wedding dress. What the hell am I supposed to help you with? Me and my wife now, we've been together about 12 years. We got married a couple of years ago in Las Vegas, so... I'll help him out where he needs to be helped. I get it right when I give her money and tell her to go buy herself. But you don't have that luxury, so it's up to you. Is that the back of the front? That's the <laughs> These boys don't know one end of a wedding dress from another. I'm glad I don't have to wear wedding dresses. It's a nightmare picking them up. Meanwhile, Neve is about to spend the day pursuing her favourite hobby, looking at wedding dresses. My eldest sister, Sonia, and she's going to come with me to a fantasy dress shop, <laughs> um, which you would think I don't need to do, but seasons change and styles change, so you have to keep up to date with the wedding dress market. So she's going to come with me and look at kind of what I might choose now. Neve then as well is a bit like Garston when it comes to style. Woman, it'd be the 60s fashion to now, but you never know what way you're going to get her. Certain things like that she would wear and I'd say, oh, that's gorgeous, Neve. And then I could see her then the following weekend and I'd be looking and saying, Neve, hello. Today, Neve is in vintage mood. I'd like something really unique, something individual and unique and okay. special. The only one? Yes. My whole idea, my dream is just princess. And this princess is having a ball. <gasps> <laughs> I think the search is over. This is an actual vintage 1950s wedding dress. Wow. Ballet style. Beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous. Would you like to try it on? I would love to. One of the things I love about this is that uh, Austin is making all the decisions, so he has to go to the, the 10 wedding should, with dress shops. Uh, actually, he's hoping one will do the trick. So from these four dresses here, tell me what one you like the best. Do you like the princess style A-line? Do you like the more mermaid shape? Do you like lace? Yeah, like he yeah, knows. I like, quite like that one. I think that's nice. That's putting a smile on your face. Yeah, in pink. Sort of like colour. In pink. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right, yeah, in pink. It's doable. All right, yeah, it's doable. It's doable. It's doable. It's doable. Just I... about doable. Meanwhile, Neve has found another dress. Another white dress. Fantastic. And I love that you can see my shoes. It's so yeah. quirky. I know it's a, it is a princess dress, but I actually really feel like a princess. But the lads are thinking Princess Barbie. You're really fixated on the pink, aren't you? I think pink is nice. Pink is lovely. She is, she's pink. Our, our mantra is pink. What's a mantra? Just something you say every day, like your, your philosophy, like. OK, so that would be the shade of pink. Austin, he's a space star. <laughs> but I love him, he's my brother. Meanwhile, has Nia found her perfect dress? I could try something else, but I know that this is the one I want. But I'm willing to try. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, let's see. So it's decision time. Yeah. Austin has assembled three dresses, all available in pink. All right. Like, I think that's the best pink for a wedding. Yeah. You know what I mean? In that style. Yeah. Your choice, mate. All right. And I'm going to pick. Shopping for wedding dresses is what Neve loves to do, and she's not leaving till she tries every dress in the shop. Wow. Suddenly, she finds a little bit of Hollywood in Dublin. Wow, Neve, that is stunning. It's amazing, isn't it? Stunning. It's so striking. I've, you know, I haven't seen anything like that before. Oh, Austin would love this dress. He would adore that dress. I'm going to pick that one. Yeah. I am. I think that's the best. But Austin's off to a perfect start with this fluffy meringue at €850, Euro, which he orders in pink. Yeah, I think she'll like that. I do. Deal done. Good stuff. Fair enough. All right. My wedding. Awesome. I feel like I could go to the Oscars in this. And I actually feel like I'm supposed to be at the Oscars. No Hollywood ending for Neve. That's pretty amazing dress. I think it's a nice subtle baby pink, a nice romantic, so it's, a, it's nice and classy. I think it's the nicest dress I've ever had on in my life ever. And I don't want to take it off. <laughs> I really don't want to take it off. And I really think that Austin would love it. If she doesn't like it, she'll absolutely bore me. She'll absolutely bore me. You bet yeah, she will. She'll absolutely bore me, but uh, I think she will like it. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure she'll like it. That's very sad. <laughs> it's kind of making me sad now that I can't pick my dress. Coming up on Don't Tell the Bride, yeah, fashion madness.
I'm not ready to kill it. Well, then you won't be gone then. The Princess Bride wants a castle, but Austin is down on the farm. If it goes wrong, it really go wrong. <laughs> it was a barn. And the groom falls off the wagon. I don't think Austin would be led astray, I don't think. The stag, he will be drinking. No, she's got to kill me. She's got to actually force me. I shouldn't make up a lie. It's just really hard. Austin and Neil are getting married in two weeks. They have a budget of €10,000, but Austin must organise everything completely on his own. <laughs> I wanted to give her everything she deserves, but she deserves the best. This is the first one that I bought. Neve has been planning her wedding since she was three and buying wedding dresses just in case. The dresses that she goes for are traditional and white. For me, though, everything kind of comes from the dress. The dress is the epicenter. The white wedding dress. I'm going to pick that one. Oh, yeah, I think that's the best. Unfortunately, Austin's epicenter is a pink, fluffy meringue whereas Niamh was thinking more Hollywood. Wow! I think it's the nicest dress I've ever had on in my life ever. I really don't want to take it off. Niamh never dreamed of being left out of her own wedding arrangements. So how much does she think Austin should have done by now? I think he should have the venue, my dress, <laughs> his suits, the rings, the entertainment, and the cake. <laughs> I think he should have all that done in a week. So far, all he's done is order a pink wedding dress. But Nia fell in love with a vintage ivory dress, and now she's off in search of an ivory tower. My dream location would be a castle on the seaside. I'd love it to be really grand and luxurious with big doors and chandeliers. This is your drinks reception. Because I, I like everything to coordinate and to work together, I think if I was getting married in this venue, the ivory dress in the vintage shop would be perfect. If I was having my wedding here, it would have to be in the winter. That's the, it would have to be around Christmas time. It would have to be a red carpet coming in here just to keep everything working together. But it's a spring wedding. Today, Austin's in Wicklow in search of that special wedding venue. And it's not a castle, more like Old MacDonald's farm. Yeah, nice sound effects, I think. Yeah. Is that yeah. possibly the meal over there? <laughs> Would you like to come on through yeah, and sure. have a look you at just this? Want to leave it, right? Well, this is the Celtic room, and as you can see, there's great views around our farm and around Wicklow. The reception itself wouldn't take place in this room. This would just be for the civil ceremony. The reception would take place in our dome. Dome? A princess needs a throne, not a dome. The dress and the venue have to be appropriate to each other. So does a pink dress go with this? So this is the dome. This is where the actual reception itself would take place. Any ideas of what style that you're looking for for the, the room? It's classical pink, you know, yeah. baby pink. Very you know, something so, sort of uh, elegant, not too uh, cheesy. Very funky, isn't it? Yeah, it's very funky, yeah. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah, it's very different to what Neve wants. <laughs> Meanwhile, our princess is still holding court. You can see everybody, like, you can see all of your guests. Do you feel like a queen? No, princess like, not queen. No, actually, married to be a queen. This setting itself is actually for about 100 to 150, so it'll be very similar to what you'd be expecting for your day. Down among the livestock in Wicklow, Austin is discovering that farms don't come cheap. 4,800. Is that the high end of the cost there? That would be your, your average cost of what uh, you know, a wedding meal would, would be. And the higher of the dome itself is €3,000 and then the higher of the uh, Celtic room for the ceremony is €1,100 including VAT. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't come and kill a with the food like the food is... No, the food would be extra. You want the three grand for a barn. You know, it was, it was a barn. You write it's four grand for food on top of that. And you're like, ah, here, like, it's not happening enough. It's all over budget um, and it's just way too expensive. Back to the drawing board for Austin. And Neve is getting fussier by the minute. It's so dark in here, it's not open. Do you know what I mean? But it, it is obviously very castly, but it's like the castle dungeon as opposed to the... So, the castle is too castly. And with the barn way above budget, Austin leaves in search of a fairer price. On the fairway, at the local golf club in Port Marnock. I think golf courses would be great because it's close to golf courses because we can have the lads that can actually play golf after us. I suppose it's, you know, it'd be more, more fun to get the lads together. Even Neve can play golf. Note to Austin, Neve has never played golf. 
this is the Link Suite in here where the civil ceremony will be. All dressed with chair covers and bows, and the bows again are colour of your choice. Also, awesome. can you get them in pink? Yeah, you can get them in awesome. pink, no problem, whatever colour you want. It's really taking my breath away, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Meanwhile, Niamh moves on, not to a golf club unfortunately, but to another castle. It's really nice the way it's kind of modern as well, it's not, it's not like medieval castle. What, you wouldn't know you were in a castle? No, you would know you were in a castle. <laughs> but a modern castle. But it's a modern castle. It's just perfect for the big party that I want. Cool. Uh, I wonder what Austin's come up with. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Moin Suite, so this is your main banquet room for your evening reception. Can you get the tablecloths in pink? Um, normally only come, come... There he goes with the pink again. Well, I can check if they can do it in pink. You don't need to go for the pink tablecloths, so I just get pink bowls. I need money for a stag do. <laughs> <laughs> and Niamh is very sweet on the bridal suite. Well, look, you can even see the big wheel over there. Oh, yeah! It's just perfect. Even though it's a castle with the style of a castle, it still has all the modern comforts that you would like in it in a stylish hotel. Every place that exists, this is absolutely my number one choice. Like if I could change it, I'd lift it and put it by the sea and then it'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the dream venue for me exists, so if I can't find it, he can't find it. So he's obviously gonna have to make compromises. Austin is compromising. Instead of a medieval banquet, she's getting a golf club. So we can meet your budget of 5,000 plus there's going to be an additional 200 euro for the extra for the 20 children. Okay. How does that sound? Well that seems, that seems like a great deal to be honest. She dreamed of a castle, he went for a golf course. But with less than a week to go, best man Scott wants to party. So what about the stags and hens? What's the story with the hens and I asked that? The hens and I going to be here. You take responsibility for that, yeah? It's in there somewhere good. She likes the party. The pub seems perfect to Austin. What bride wouldn't like a good pub quiz for her hen night? And it even has its own castle. I had three sending off for my wedding and I was pretty happy. But uh, he needs to organise something better for her. Maybe not a great hen night, but maybe it's, it, Neve loves quizzes. You're going into Temple Bar and then we're coming here. I can't see him having it in the local. That's going to be ridiculous. I might think of somewhere else, yeah. Mike. We're supposed to be organising half this anyway. You let me organise nothing, Mr. Bridezilla. Austin's pretty much idea of a stag do was around the golf, cup of tea, back to me miles for a sambo and sleeping on the couch. He stressed me out more so than anything else. Like, you know, asked me, can you do this, can you do that? And I'm like, just do what you're told, you know. Just, I just need you to sit there and just relax. The only thing I know is confirmed is a pink wedding dress, which I don't know if she's going to even like. It's cringing. And venue. It'll all come together. Touch wood. Unless he comes to his senses, a wedding might not even be on the cards. Seriously, a pub quiz. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nevi, if you could pick anything you wanted for your hen night, what would you have? What would your ideal like night be? I would love a Dolly Parton appreciation night. Everybody would have to dress up as Dolly Parton. Did you hear that hen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm puzzled about the stag doing it, and honestly, I don't know what to do for this chap. He doesn't drink, he's teetotal. He used to drink, and um, one day he just stopped, and fair play to him for stopping with the stag, he will be drinking. I don't think Austin would be led astray, I don't think. I hope. This is very soon, Mr. Tyler, please, come on! Oh, I don't think he needs to be led. Oh, bro, things you do when you're getting married, huh? Oh, jeez. Yeah! Get that into you. The wheel has fallen off the wagon. Thankfully for the ladies, Austin listened to his best man. On? On? <laughs> surprise, surprise, a disco bus. And the night starts with a glass slipper and an invitation okay. fit for a princess. Oh, sweet cheese. <laughs> Hi, Neve. You're getting married on the Monday, which doesn't make sense. <laughs> the 18th of April, 2011, at 3.30 p.m. It doesn't fit and it's grammatically incorrect. <laughs> There's no pleasing some people. But Neve seems to get over her disappointment. <laughs> so where does a groom in a pink onesie go for his stag? To Temple Bar, the mecca of the Kiss Me Quick Hat and wet t-shirt. I'm having a good laugh, all right, yeah. He's drinking, that's, that's a start. Oh, you're getting married. <laughs> oh, come on. 
<laughs> okay, bring him back. He's got a few, few hands nights that are attracted to himself. My question being married if he has a quick look at them all, but... But there's only one woman for Austin, and it's not a blow-up Dolly Parton. Neve, I love you, you know, you my, my, you're my soulmate. I love you to death, you're just gorgeous, you're absolutely awesome, you're so beautiful. Back on the disco bus, the girls are going gaga. When I met her tonight for the first time, it was very emotional. I got upset, like, seeing her, knowing how Austin misses her and whatnot. Unfortunately, the teetotaler is totally out of his tree. I'll probably just black out in the next 20 minutes and I'll, I'll end up at home in my bed and I'll be like, oh, that was a great night. Austin, when I hang over, I haven't seen a long, long, long time. But uh, as I said, he'd probably drive down to my mammy for a breakfast and a cuddle and a sleep on the couch. That's Austin, all right. He's a mammy's boy. Ah, uh, if mammy could see him now. Austin still hasn't organised one wedding, but now he thinks he's found his calling in life. I'm going to make the best wedding ever. Everybody's going to be like, oh, awesome, that wedding is amazing. In 20 years, they'll be like, that's the best wedding. And whenever everyone looks at it, they'll be like, that is so awesome. I, I could even be a wedding planner, you know? I think, I, and, you know, after this, I could be a wedding planner. I could put that on my CV. Weddings by Austin. Now there's a thought. There's a price to be paid for a wild night on the town. Next morning, guess who's glued to the bed? Yes, Prince Charming has turned into Sleeping Beauty and the family business is missing a family member. All right, Sapi, how do fans coming into work today? It must be about 10 phone calls I've given them this morning. Still no answer, I still not ring me back. Voicemail. <sighs> Normally he's supposed to be in about half eight, quarter to nine. You'd probably see him at about 11, about half 11. And he's here till about two o'clock and he's gone, he has to do something or he has to be somewhere. So he's supposed to be nine to five, but you get about three, four hours a day out. He has this thing as an excuse now, it's a three week holiday I think he's been on. I would be worried about that. Yeah, his time management and um, his allocation of time to sleep as opposed to organisation ratio might be a little off. Oh, it works, Remy. Yeah, they want me to come in. I'm not really in the mood though. I have a wedding to organise, so I'm taking a break. When I get stressed out, I sleep. So the more the more stressed out, the more I sleep. So I need I, I need my sleep. I really do, and especially with this on being under such pressure, putting a wedding together. You know, actually the pink baby suit was fine. Nobody said anything, and it just was natural. It just you know didn't feel like I was wearing a pink baby suit. It just felt like I just looked cool. Perhaps a romantic song will cure the hangover. Time for Austin to log on to Neve's Music of Love. I didn't keep a list of what order I had them in or whatever, so I don't know what one he's listening to each day. Just, you know, I hope he feels connected to me when he listens to it. Password. I love you so much, Ashley. Well, I've been watching the videos and they've been very helpful. Uh, a bit teary and emotional. The um, song they picks is, uh, is, always, is always very awesome. Bon Jovi, one of Nia's favourites. Thank you for loving me. Really, really missing him. Um, Just nothing is as much fun. I just, I just don't like life without him. I miss her a lot, though. I miss her very much. But at the end of the day, you know, it's ten grand to put a wedding together, and you know, it's, a, it's an absolute gift. And what about a gift for Niamh? Austin and Scott are off on a wedding ring hunt. I actually like the plain gold. I think the diamonds wouldn't really mix with the engagement ring as well. Like so, I think plain gold. Do you know what size finger she is? Um, well, when I got her engagement ring, it was like it was in between M and Q. M is here and Q is here, <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't think he'd get it massively wrong-ish. I just think he'd be far more inclined to just literally forget things. So who's coming to this wedding? No one, unless he sends some invitations soon. Hello. You want to get invitations? Well, I don't know. I'll probably just ring people. Word about it's word about. late, Austin. Awesome, like, do you know what I mean for? Start doing invitations. Yeah, well, maybe I might get a poster too, and maybe. A poster? Austin, it's a wedding we're going to, but not um, Westlife in the point. He has brains to born in certain things, and then in other ways, then he is the most forgetful 
person that you could ever meet. He's not one for the kind of conventional kind of normality of things. I think he's the one or two tricks up his sleeve, but he's just not kind of filling me in on them yet. You know, and the more I ask him, the more he's like, leave me alone. I call him Groomzilla. And so, what does a Groomzilla like to wear? Well, what's the story now with your dressing the, yourself and the lads? We're going to be wearing uh, kilts. Kilts? Yeah, kilts be cool. Austin being Austin, anything is possible. I'm trying to just kind of focus on, oh yeah, I'd like this, and I think he knows that I'd like this, but then sometimes I get flashes when I kind of think, yeah, but it's Austin, like. Could you imagine the scarf falling out? Well, he, he'll get the, the paint, like the brave hard makeup and stuff, and then put a sword over his back. Me personally, I, I think it's lovely now, because you don't see it very often. You don't see many kilts, and I'm actually delighted that they're all going to be in one. Uh, maybe not all of them. Sorry. Um, You're going to be wearing a kilt for the wedding. I'm not wearing any kilt. Uh, you have to wear a kilt. Uh, okay. Sorry, you have to wear a kilt. Yeah. I'm not going to wear a kilt. <laughs> I don't care. It's nice as well, and if that's what he wants. I don't care. You heard what he said. I'm not wearing a kilt. Be well, then you won't be going then. If he didn't wear it now, we might have a little problem. So off to the fitting, without Dad, who will be sad to hear that he's missing out on a special tartan for the Douglas family name. I just want all the men in a kilt. Oh, man. Scott's beginning to think Dad had the right idea. No oh, way, man. I thought funny, only the bride should be wearing a dress maybe on the, the wedding day, not the, the groom as well. Oh, I look at you, look gorgeous. Did you leave your boxes on? Yeah. Why? Did you take them off? Yeah, you're supposed to take them off, yeah. You know, that's why you, it's kind of real airy, it keeps your, you know, your nuts real cool, like, you know. The groomsmen's clothes, again, would have to be appropriate to the venue. If it's going to be in a grand castle with big curtains, then the, the the suits have to be appropriate and they have to match the venue. Take a deep breath, it's not that bad. You're looking at me, brother. Yeah, all the lads be like, oh, Scott, you look so sexy in that dress, like a schoolgirl skirt. <laughs> and now for the finishing touch, a sparring. Scottish for man bag. You know what colour the bridesmaid dresses are going to be? Eh, uh, no idea. I still have to get them, so I'm thinking probably pink. You want to be careful now with the colours of the colours of the kilt and stuff, so word of advice. Ah, advice, like boxers, is for wimps. Ah, the dodgiest schoolgirls I've ever seen. It looks awesome. You know you'd love it. <gasps> yeah, I love it. Pink dress, the, the multicoloured kilts that he's got. Uh, I, I don't even know where he's going with this. I feel Scottish. You can feel the hair just coming out of me, you know? <laughs> Still to come, Bridesmaid Bedlam. I'm going to be walking down the aisle like in a black bag. It's a very difficult group to, to please. A pink dress mess. The dress is pretty scary. <laughs> and the guests have had enough. What's wrong? Like, what's to happening? Because all the guests was all coming back out. It's just rude. Niamh is hoping to get married. Austin is organising the wedding. He's bought a pink dress and booked a golf course for the reception. If she doesn't like it, she'll absolutely bore me. My dream location would be a castle on the seaside. So with just days to go, he's on course for a disaster. But in the meantime, guess what? Niamh has another song for him. I Stand By You, The Pretenders. I Stand By You by The Pretender, that would be one song that, that'd be kind of one of our songs. But when she does stand by him, what will the bridesmaids be wearing? The big thing I have to do today is uh, get the bridesmaids dress. I'm not looking forward to it, to be honest. It's probably going to be the most stressful thing I'll have to do. Pleasing, pleasing one woman is hard enough, and then pleasing four women is a, is a, is a feat in itself. What's he going to come out with? I'm going to be walking down the aisle like in a black bag or something, because he's going to end up like going, oh, I didn't get them. I think it could be difficult to manage them. Um, I think it would be very hard to get them to agree on anything. It's the last shopping day before the wedding, so they'll have to agree on something. And Austin's problems are only just beginning. I'm not willing to wear a dress, so that's another complication into it, you know, so... Th there's a lot of pressure points. The last time she wore a dress was her Debs, and the time previous to that was her communion. But I would have thought pink is the key. Uh, to, to happiness for me. But the pink dresses mustn't put the budget in the red. What is the budget for the bridesmaid dresses? It's about 400. Oh, e for each? The no. That's what I spent on the lads, 400 euro. Like. That might be fine for the lads, but I think you're going to have to be a bit more generous for the girls. You know, that's a higher expectation. Like, I'm all, all budgeted out. Like. Hopefully, 
Austin will save enough money in the budget to make sure that they're dressed properly. Here's hoping, Neil. Have you a, a vision for these uh, bridesmaids, yeah. Austin? Pink romantic. Talk to me about the pink you didn't mind. Are um, you thinking a yeah, stronger? Fusion pink. Yeah, strong pink. Is that a chopper? <laughs> I'd advise possibly the navy um, to go against the pink because pink, there's so many tones of pink that this fuchsia might actually clash. No, I'm happy with the fuchsia, I am. Okay, okay. Are but you willing to try the navy? Not really, no. Because I, I wouldn't be happy with navy and I don't think navy would either. Okay, that's no problem. Now, personal shopper Clara knows what it's like explaining colour coordination to a man, not to mention dress sizes. Mine's too small, small size. <laughs> I have four extremely different bridesmaids. I have one bridesmaid that doesn't want to wear a dress. I have another bridesmaid that's not here. I have another bridesmaid that uh, can't get the size to fit. And I have another bridesmaid that is uh, just perfect. She's fitting into everything. It's my sister. Emma may be sorted but things are not shaping up for bridesmaid Emer. It doesn't fit me and it clashes with my hair. I suppose it's just that we're all such different shapes and sizes, it's really hard, like, if you're planning a wedding over a period of time, you'd have them fitted and, you know, but it's just trying to buy dresses for a wedding, it's a big deal. I don't know, if there's, there's, there's a dress here for, for everyone in the party. So obviously I don't want to upset anybody and say, make it, you know, I'm forcing to wear a dress because, you know, that's just, that's just not on and Neve wouldn't like that either, so, you know, I'm under a lot of pressure to, to get the right dress. I think we, we look at the navy again. Um, in terms of the shape, did you like the shape of that? Um, yeah, it just didn't fit me properly. But okay, yeah. well let's let's go back and, and have another look. The fuchsia colour is uh, it's too difficult to achieve. We have to think think outside the box and go for something a little different. One won't wear a dress, the other can't get one to fit, the colour scheme is a nightmare and Austin is having one. I found this really cool jacket. Okay, it even has your fuchsia stripe on it that you've been looking for. I'd wear it in public and be happy with it. It's just one small detail, the price. It's 289. 289 euro is way over budget, but Austin is running out of options. Now he's talking about navy bridesmaid dresses, you know, which is even less pink um, than Neve would be expecting. Navy is less pink than pink. But it's Austin's last hope. Yeah, and the pink tops go gorgeous. Yeah. Lovely. I'm just worried they're so dark, that's yeah. all. No, look, I don't I don't think it's gonna be an issue with darkness because you know at this stage, you know, kills are gonna be navy. I think Navy would be happy that everyone's happy and there's no pressure and there's no you know, everybody's comfortable with what they're wearing. They're one sixty each. That's four eighty for the three dresses. Right, yeah, right, we'll work it. Forty sound. That's um, without the shoes or the jewellery or or these. They, they definitely are the best fit. They're a really good fit on you. The bridesmaids are in navy. The budget is in tatters. And so is Austin. Today is the day that the bride sees her dress. She's famously hard to please and everyone is on tenterhooks. I don't want to know about the wedding dress. I want to get the surprise on the day. See what Austin actually picked out. Because Austin wouldn't be the best style wise, you know, for himself, never even mind for Neve. I don't need a plan B. I just imagine, you know, everything will go really, really well. No plan B. This better be good. Sunday morning, yeah, we're waiting on Neve to arrive. Um, a little bit nervous, but at the same time, confident enough that he knows it's bright. Neve has been dreaming of the perfect dress and spent her whole life searching for it. Could this be the one? We've just heard it coming in now, so we just need to get the dress put away for the grand reveal. We need to blindfold it, get you into the fitting room, and get you into your dress. OK, so we're going to blindfold it now, OK? OK. I do see it as kind of a test for Austin. It's really his way of showing me that he, he totally gets me. Can't wait to see it on, yeah. Now, we have seen her in a few wedding dresses before, so it'll be great to actually see her in the one that she's going to wear and really get married in, so that'll be great. OK, so are we ready? Oh, yeah, ready. sure. <laughs> OK, so we'll guide you out, OK? Oh, my God. Hopefully it will go well. It will go absolutely brilliantly, and she'll be absolutely delighted. Lee, I think you're going to be crying when you see this. Crying good or crying bad? So I'm going to 
Shoulders <laughs> <laughs> are gorgeous. It fits you perfect. Look. I absolutely love it. It's absolutely perfect. I genuinely don't think I'd pick a better dress myself. Well, I haven't at my last three attempts. <laughs> this is absolutely perfect. Like, I'm really looking forward to seeing him. Um, and I'm looking forward to wearing this dress. It's my favourite shade of pink. It's not plain or boring. It's, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So after three weeks of stress, Austin has his first success. The big day is here. And sleepyhead Austin is up early. First, he has to get the flowers and dresses delivered to the bride and bridesmaids. Beautiful, Emma. Oh, she's a fabulous empty. Get them wrapped up and let's go. You have to make a move. And he has an important surprise package to deliver to his bride to be. Right, so you have the dresses and also give it a little there. Does, give it. does Emma just hand that to you, Yeah. This is, this is to Neve from you. Everything's rosy for the Douglas clan. See ya. But over at Bridezilla HQ, things are getting a bit emotional. Well, I suppose the biggest thing is that I'm just going to cry all day and then I'm not going to be able to say or do anything other than cry. Now for every hairdresser's worst nightmare. I suppose I, I should say to you first that I don't really like people touching my hair. We'll give it a go and if there's anything while we're doing it that you don't like, we can always change it. If she can do the hair without touching it, she should be fine. Come on, look at the time of the day it is. Oh, no, Meanwhile, the... Austin's off for his first close shave of the day at the barber's. There's a hay shave. Well, this is lovely. This is real nice, this is. Nice and weird. All right. You hurting, bro? No, it's all right. I say she's looking gorgeous. I say she's pretty tense at the moment. His name's emotion at the best of times. Now a romantic gesture for the emotional bride. Oh, wow. Does it match my pajamas? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Is that not what you're wearing? Before we get ready and get into the commotion of everything, I have a little present for you from Austin. So there's a little card and a little <laughs> present in it for you. <laughs> Make sure I'm on time, please. Neve did say she wanted everything to match. Meanwhile, time for the lads to get suited. Or dressed. Or whatever you do with kilts. I think a jacket makes me communion. Dirty little schoolgirl. <laughs> Don't look at me legs. <laughs> the cultural heritage of the Douglas Tartan might not be having the desired effect. Ah, white legs. Always make sure your sparring is well packed. Awesome suits, you know, what blokes wear. While the lads are tied up with their kills, Dad makes his escape. Good. Finally, the fun and Highland games are over, and the lads are on their way. And eventually, Neve allows the hairdresser to touch her hair. You doing okay? Yeah. Don't mind getting it done just for the day that's in it. <laughs> as much as you hate it. Yeah. <laughs> but it has to be done. It's too hard to manage myself, like, but I, I really hate it. Like. These are the cardigans, they're gorgeous, they're gorgeous though. And the bridesmaids get some accessories after all. Be with the flowers, like these for your hair. Oh, brilliant. I actually didn't know what we got in for her. This is the necklace. Oh, yeah. they're gorgeous. I don't know how she's going to react to the bridesmaid dresses. I think if she saw them on their own, without the cardigans and the pink accessories and, and the shoes and the jewellery, that she might be a bit disappointed because they're dark. Um, I hope she's not disappointed. I still have to do my makeup and I still have to get into my dress and the girls still have to get into theirs and I still have to see them. So it's like less than an hour really to go and nobody is dressed. I'm never late. Um, I can't actually tolerate lateness. I don't, I don't think there's any excuse for it. I'd hate that if people had to wait for me. And I know it's like that tradition that the bride should be late, but it's just rude. So it's not a tradition that I'm interested in following. But it's even ruder for a groom to be late. So Austin reaches the venue bang on time just like the guests, who are expecting a wedding any minute now. I know, I'm looking forward to now, only a few more minutes, like, pretty, pretty good, like, you know. Things aren't going to plan for our punctual bride, unless she's getting married in her dressing gown. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, they're absolutely gorgeous. Your turn now, Eve, go get her. <laughs> I absolutely love the bridesmaid dresses. 
they're, they're just perfect. Like, they look fabulous. They just, they all look fabulous. They'd look even more fab at the wedding. Now the gospel choir have joined the guests, who are beginning to think that Neve may have changed her mind. But instead of walking up the aisle, the bride is just coming down the stairs, eight miles away. If she's going to be on time, Austin better be sending a Ferrari. <laughs> oh, I'm scared of myself. <laughs> Transport by Steptoe and Son. Not to 60 in your dreams. <laughs> Thank you. Meanwhile, back at Port Marnock, Austin and the guests wait. And wait. And wait. Neve's taken the scenic route, but the guests won't wait much longer. I have no idea where we're going. And the bridesmaids have no idea when she's going to arrive. At least the air conditioning is working. And Neve has a perfectly matching watch to remind her that she is well over an hour late. At this pace, it could take another hour. They have four. The guests have had enough. The room emptied out and we were saying, what's wrong, like what's it happening? Because all the guests were all coming back out. And then someone said, no, it'll be another maybe three quarters of an hour. Has Austin's three weeks of hell all been for nothing? Finally, someone hears the clippity-clop of the bridal carriage and convinces the guests to go back inside. It's now five o'clock. The bride is an hour and a half late. After the worst few hours of Austin's life, the bride finally makes it to her own wedding. Austin, will you have Neve to be your wedded wife? This is the bit where you say, I will. I will. I, Neve, take you, Austin, to be my lawful wedded husband. I can now pronounce them husband and wife. Austin, you may kiss the bride. Get a room. Everything is exactly what I hoped it would be. And well, just, you're just genius. I'm actually too happy to even cry because I'm just so happy. Oh, yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> very emotional, but very loving them. Do you know what I mean? Everyone, you could kind of feel the love in the room like for them. I was nearly bleeding crying. I don't cry or nothing. As you can tell, Austin's... A nut job, you know, this is what he comes up with this and it actually worked, man. I was shocked like. The only bad thing about the wedding is I'm still wearing this bloody dress. <laughs> okay, are you okay? It's coming. Are you <laughs> Well, Neve's obviously had a long time. She's been planning this since she was a child, but I think that uh, even in her plans, uh, they didn't reach the heights that was achieved today. I suppose the specialist thing about today was nothing was wrong. Everything was right. Three weeks. Bro, I don't know how you pulled it off. Neve said I did a better job than uh, what, what she could have done, so gee, what more can you say? Like, I'm just brilliant. That should be just the way every bride looks, because it's just awesome. How much did you give me? I would give him between eight and nine out of ten. I'd take off the one or two just, just for being a Moni Mary. I wouldn't give him the ten. I'd leave it at that. I cannot believe what he's actually done and achieved in three weeks. I, I couldn't do it myself. I genuinely couldn't. I couldn't do it if I had six months to do it. All Austin had was 10,000 euro and three weeks to get
give Niamh the best day of her life. Has he done it? Like I genuinely, genuinely couldn't have done it better. I couldn't have well, picked anything better. That's amazing. Like, that means a lot. Like. She waited all her life to finally say I do. Now she has just one more thing to say. Thanks, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Next week on Don't Tell the Bride. It freaks you out a bit knowing like what he's going to do with this. Would he be able to like, walk up the aisle right now? I don't want something totally mental like. Did you use for wedding before? No. I don't want it just all for her either, you know, I want a few bits that I want in. It's not me. No. If she doesn't like the wedding dress, she'll get angry. I will cry. Oh!